In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, God is a just and compassionate giver. Let us not be envious when God is generous towards others, but grateful that he has shown us his mercy. On this 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us now ask God to grant us mercy and forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are near to all who call upon you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are just in all your ways and abounding and compassionate. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are salvation for all God's people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, for our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. 
and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life to be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go out to my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. And he said to them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of weeks ago, I was having Mass with uh, some of the children from our school at Our Lady of Las Vegas, and this particular Gospel was being proclaimed. And so I asked the children, I said, what, what do you think of this situation. Suppose you were looking for a job and and you were out in the morning and someone came up to you and says, look, I can give you a job and I'll pay you $200 to work. You go, wow, 200 bucks, I'll do it. So he sent them off to, to his business. And while you're working, you notice that other workers come in later at nine o'clock, some at 12, some at three in the afternoon, and even some as late as five in the afternoon. And then in the evening when the job is finished, Paychecks were distributed, and everyone got $200. What would you think of that? Some of the children raised their hands and said, well, that's not fair. And said, well, why not? Well, because we worked all day long, and these only one hour, and we got the same amount. That's just not fair. And I said, well, that's precisely the point in what Jesus wanted us to understand. He knows that we think in human terms. In fact, he told Peter one time, you think as men think and not as God thinks. But what Jesus wanted us to do is to raise our thoughts and our minds to God and his understanding that this parable and all parables that Jesus speak to us are there to teach us something. And he wanted us to teach a lesson here, not about working and labor, but about the kingdom of God that the kingdom of God is ultimately me for all of us, every single one of us. And it doesn't matter if who you are 
or how long you think you s s strove to work for it, but because we don't work for the kingdom of God, because ultimately it is God's gift to us. None of us merits the kingdom of heaven. It is God who, who gives that to us through his gift of grace, through his mercy, for his love for all of us. And so we can't be jealous of God's mercy. We can't be jealous of God's uh, of generosity as the workers were in today's parable, as Jesus points out, because God is merciful. God does love us. I remember a story once that it was a person was, was um, trying to build a tower to the sky, to heaven, and no matter how tall he tried to get that tower to be, just wouldn't make it t tall enough, and never would. You can't reach, you can't build a tower to God. That's when you realize how pathetic it is what we do in the sight of God, and that we stand on the very top of that tower, and reach up and look to God, say, Lord, here I am, come get me. And that's when God comes down and lifts us with his grace to take us the rest of the way. Because there is no other way. It's only by the grace of God that we reach the kingdom of heaven. And so today, as we hear this parable and we try to understand Jesus' point and what he's teaching us, let us be thankful that God is merciful towards us, that he loves us, and that our place in the kingdom of heaven is not anything that we do. It is merely by the grace of God that we receive it. Let us stand now, everyone, and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, there will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the boundless generosity of our God, let us bring our needs before the Lord now. For the mission of forgiveness in our church, that we may see the desire of Christ to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governments all over the world, may they look out for the common good and be transparent to the people whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, may we be granted understanding and respect for those who have different perspectives and experiences than ours. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for those who suffer during these trying times, and for all the personal mass intentions we bring before the Lord in the quiet of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of life, hear our prayers that we might respond to your call in our lives to serve you and others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord, Lord accept, accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all this holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you, Father, we live and we move and we have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, Father, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And now
now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for participating at Mass today. And as we are filled with God's grace and his spirit, let us go forth now with his blessing. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.